Hello, we will give it a few moments for people to join in. So I've added the um, link to the chat. So that's where the uh, meeting notes are. It's a bit unfortunate. Zoom uh, no longer does a, an actual link anymore. They just have copy and paste text. Nope, it seems we fix it. And without link. <laughs> ah, funny. Maybe maybe I need to update uh, Zoom. Maybe that's the problem because it's not showing it as link on mine. Great. Can uh, everyone see the meeting notes? Yep. yep. And uh, is it clear? Do I need to zoom in or? Um, maybe a little, I guess. Yeah, this is better, yeah. Oh, yeah, this monitor has an insanely high resolution, so. OK, so let's go ahead and um, get started. So welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. Um, we have this meeting every week on Tuesdays at 8 AM. Um, we um, we tend to have a meeting every other week as well. Uh, did you all decide to to cancel that meeting for the uh, for the um, a the Asia friendly time for for the moment? I think that was a decision. Uh, I think it will be on next week, so we can just start it and check if it will be no attendees. Uh, probably we will uh, we should uh, cancel it for a time 
Okay. So we're going to put that on hiatus pretty pretty soon. So we have one more one more meeting in that area. If we start to get uh, interest in people in in those time zones, and then we'll see about restarting it up. Um, we also participate in the CNCF Telecom User Group, which uh, the next meeting is going to be Monday, May 18th at 3 a.m. Pacific time. We also participate in the CNCF SIG Network, which occurs every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, the locations are located, the URLs are located on the meeting notes. Um, a couple major things that have happened. So KubeCon has, um, uh, has gone virtual. Um, and so in August 17th through 20th, uh, we will be having the, uh, the virtual KubeCon. Um, the schedules uh, should still be the same in terms of um, in terms of the main sessions for NSM. Uh, as the tentative uh, uh, approach that we that we're going to take is that we still want NSM Con to occur, uh, and so we the, uh, we're working out details onto as to what's going to happen with that. Um, you sh if you have registered uh, fifty dollars for uh, US for NSMCon, uh, that should have been refunded to you. Since uh, the reason for the for the fifty dollars was to ensure that uh, that people who signed up uh, were indeed attending. So if you signed up, uh, look out for that fifty dollars reverse on your credit card uh, or however you paid. The second thing is um, this: the second thing we, that we were doing with that money was uh, paying it into the diversity fund in order to help people get to KubeCon who uh, historically would be unable to due to financial reasons. And so since it's virtual, that uh, need does not exist for this specific one. And so, um, is, so we'll we're going to work on getting details about uh, about the next NSM NSM con at KubeCon EU. Um, so in terms of um, of other events moving forward, we also have ONES Los Angeles that is uh, that is uh, occurring. It's um, that is going to be in September. Uh, the ONES Europe is currently been postponed and to be determined. I don't have information on that. Uh, interestingly, the, um, the uh, ONES has been doing virtual keynotes and virtual mini conferences. Uh, so I would expect, uh, considering uh, many of the countries there are continuing to postpone, uh, I would expect this to probably go virtual as well. Um, the final one, KubeCon and Cloud, Cloud Native Con North America is, is still in Boston. Call for papers are still open. Uh, they close on June 12th. So that is uh, one month away from now. So make sure you get your, your entries in. Uh, and as of now, there's no schedule change to KubeCon North America. Um, so in terms of announcements, um, so the first one is uh, Ed. Uh, Ed is not showing up today because he's feeling uh, he's feeling sick. It's non-COVID related. Uh, he should be feeling better with uh, with a bit of rest. So, uh, other other things that are going on in terms of the in terms of the community is um, we also we've we have. We also have been uh, working towards. Um, uh, actually, I'll save those for for the for the main call. Um, so, so in terms of social media community team, um, so uh, in terms of our stats, we are now uh, up eight. We have seven hundred sixty-one followers. Uh, we are following an additional ten people. We we uh, shout out uh, eighteen different retweets. Uh, including call reminders, uh, last week's video recap, uh, CNCF webinars. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen the CNCF webinar on uh, Zero Trust, uh, 
please make sure to go see it. Um, there is a link further down in the in the agenda from last week, and uh, you can also find it if you look up zero zero trust and you put my name uh, Frederick uh, and CNCF webinar into Google. It should be one of the top hits. Um, it was, so it was hosted uh, not last week but the week before. Um, in terms of major events, uh, there is now a registration for Open Source Summit and Embedded Linux uh, conference. They, so another virtual experience. You can uh, sign up for that now. They've greatly reduced the cost of this, if I recall properly. Uh, I believe it's I think fifty dollars to join in. So. Uh, there's a lot of really great material in Open Source Summit, and uh, it's actually one of the places where NSM did one of its first uh, set of talks. Um, so highly recommend uh, joining in to some of those. Uh, you'll you'll learn a lot. Um, we also have LF networking, which is going on. Um, they're providing uh, uh, they're also they're providing their training courses and certifications. We tweeted out information about edge networking, uh, a new guide that they put out. Uh, we reposted things in Kubernetes about how to uh, how to thrive in a and evolve as a containers orchestration platform and uh, their support for open source. We also uh, posted a telecom TV panel discussion uh, tell about how telecoms must have a clear migration to cloud native. Uh, if I recall, this is actually one that I that I had. Was this one I had participated in? No, this was a different one. I had participated in some telecom TV stuff before in the past, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of migrating to cloud native. Um, definitely recommend taking a look at some of their stuff. So uh, it's it's also hosted people like Dan Cohn and uh, Taylor. Uh, in, in addition to myself, in in other uh, in other videos, um, in terms of LinkedIn stats, well, we've added an additional follower and we've reposted everything in Twitter into LinkedIn. Uh, the plan, in terms of our plans, we we intend to retweet uh, the the contributor podcast and continue to promote the registration for NSMCon uh, EU and promote the sessions there. So, in the terms of um, in terms of the agenda, is there anything that anyone would like to bring up? Uh, I have a community status update I can give, but before we do that, is there any topics that anyone would like to discuss or or uh, ask questions about? Hi, this is uh, Jonathan Barry here. First time uh, joining. I actually presented last week at the SIG Networking about a, a research project, more of a survey of L7 protocols in, in and across the uh, CNCF landscape. Um, it's in relationship to the startup we're working on, but it, it's really to identify how networking uh, is implemented and some of the assumptions around well, effectively HTTP in, in a lot of projects. Um, and where are there opportunities as a community we can improve those capabilities to enable alternative use cases like what I'm focused on, which is IoT or gaming or, or, or telephony. Um, and Ed was on the call and he definitely uh, had a lot of good things to say about NSM and, and suggested I, I join and, and uh, participate uh, and, and learn. Um, so I actually posted my slides in, in the Slack channel the other day and uh, the video recording. Um, so I, I encourage people to, who are interested in that topic to check out um, the document and, and the presentation. Um, and beyond that, I don't have anything else to say, just that I, I'm going to be uh, a fly on the wall for a bit and, and seeing where I can, I can learn and contribute. Cool. Do you, do you have access to the, uh, to the uh, meeting notes? Because uh, you, can, you can add that into the agenda and post a link there so that people can easily find it. Perfect. I'll do that right now. Cool. And um, yeah, and uh, I don't know how much Ed told you in terms of NSM, because uh, I know it's not an NSM meeting that they have over there. Uh, interestingly, we focus primarily on layer two and layer three, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, layer seven is built on layer two and three. And so there's a, there's a great, uh, there, there, there's some, there's, they're definitely very uh, complementary. And so uh, if, uh, if you want to go into any of that in more detail as time, as time moves forward, uh, let, let, us, let us know. And I'm more than happy to, to, to dedicate some time in this, in this meeting to discuss some of your, some of your use cases. Awesome. Yeah, um, and, and we had a little interlude about that. And the, 
it's an area I have to go deeper in because um, a lot of the use cases are definitely layer seven and the model, um, as long as layer three, four uh, is, is uh, doable, then great. But there's actually a lot of protocols that are not even IP based or are, are sort of quasi IP. And that's where um, Ed was saying, hey, there's, there's some, some stuff you, you, you're all looking into. So for example, um, ultra low bandwidth protocols in IoT, again, because my background and focus there. Um, they they don't even use IP framing, uh, so how, you know how do we how do we square that circle kind of kind of thing? And that's what definitely piqued my interest uh, um, and potential area I think of of discovery and, and conversation. Yeah, we're definitely definitely well aligned in that space then, uh, because that is squarely one of our one of the things that we're looking for, that we're looking at. Uh, not that specific use case directly, uh, but uh, analogous one. So, for example, if you're working in the telecom space, uh, they also have a variety of different layer two and layer three protocols that they use that are uh, that are not necessarily IP based. And so uh, it's, it's not uncommon to find things like MPLS. And one of the things that we found in the OpenStack world is that many of the vendors, uh, because Neutron was squarely uh, IP and uh, Mac based, uh, uh, Ethernet based, uh, what people would do is they would say, oh, I need an MPLS label. And there's no MPLS label that was available. Um, and now you can extend the API a little bit more. So it's a little bit more flexible, but still an issue where they're okay. There's no MPLS label available. So how do I inject one in? I will repurpose the Mac address as the MPLS label and move forward. And then they worked out that they can gain access to the rabbit MQ, um, uh, backend and inject their own messages into it, which completely subverted the, uh, the protocol. And so. Uh, I think if, if we don't solve these type of issues, one of two things will end up happening. Either we'll end up pegging all of the users onto uh, a frame or uh, protocol that they don't really work well in. Like you can only speak over this specific thing that is IP based uh, over L7 HTTP, or we go the opposite direction and people will find ways to subvert the protocol out of, out of necessity. And then not, not out of maliciousness, just just purely out of out of necessity to get their their use cases uh, done, and uh, we end up with uh, fragmentation at that point. So I th so I think the things that you describe, uh, and we we go beyond Kubernetes as well. So this isn't just like this is not only for Kubernetes networking. It's also about how do you connect things that are that are outside of Kubernetes with each other and with Kubernetes, with Kubernetes things or to to things where there's no Kubernetes in there at all. So yeah, so I think I think we'll be relatively well uh, aligned um, at a future time if you want to uh, show off and uh, discuss some of the stuff that you're looking at, like feel free to feel free to add yourself to the agenda. We'll be more more than happy to go over it. Awesome, yeah, and I, and I think there's uh, based off of just you know, it's, it's a nice conversation in this one. There's areas I want to go and extend uh, that I haven't done already. So I'd be more than happy to present um, what I presented to the SIG um, in an upcoming meeting, but then identify some of those, those opportunities. So, you know, for example, what happens if you use one of these protocols that, that are, you know, not L7 based? Um, and how would, you, how would you implement that? Um, how would you do load balancing, congestion control, uh, security, and all those things? Uh, or how do how do network operators like telcos, but also these up and coming satellite providers who um, we're working with early on, how do they integrate, you know, their call it like L1, L2 protocol, um, and actually travel all the way through. So yeah, I think this is, there's a lot of um, interesting ideas and opportunities to to make sure we build the right things. Yeah, as as a person who's worked on ham radio, that's also very exciting to me. <laughs> and so. Um, uh, in terms of um, you, in terms of getting them to to communicate, uh, um, yeah, I, it, yeah, that that'll definitely be quite interesting. So let's let's make sure that we, that uh, when you're ready to to present, let let us know, and we'll we'll make sure that you know, that you'll that you're on the agenda. Great, thank you. Cool. So in terms of um, is is there any other uh, Questions or comments that uh, people would like to bring up before we go into the main uh, into the main status.
Okay, so in terms of uh, work that's been going on, so we have um, uh, seven streams of work. So the, the first one uh, is, I'll go over some of the stuff that Ed has been working on. So Ed has been uh, working on something called Togo, T-E-G-O. And this is to help with the development of NSM with some of the uh, with some of the slowness in the in some of the builds. So when you, because NSM is a lot of small components in the Kubernetes uh, reference implementation, uh, sometimes the the feedback loop can can get a bit long um, and break you out of your flow. So what Togo does is it does a local build, and then it passes the cache into uh, into the Docker container and uh, reruns the build there just for primarily for safety. Um, and, th and then builds your, your application at, from, from that point. And so the, the nice thing in this scenario is that uh, it turns out that you can, if you're careful, you can transfer the cache artifacts from one node to another and reuse them as long as you meet certain certain requirements. And to go is designed to to meet those. And so that way, when you do a build, you're not rebuilding everything from uh, from scratch. Instead, you're only building things that have uh, that have changed. So that is uh, um, and so th that's that's the first thing that we're that we're uh, that we're focusing on is getting that. Uh, I guess you would say Go compiler accelerator. It's very similar to uh, Ccache if you've if you've worked with uh, if you've worked with that. Um, so another thing that uh, we are working on is uh, for the new SDK. I'm getting very close to uh, having a, a full a full working example uh, showing off the uh, the ICMP responder. So we have a working ICMP responder in the main repo. Uh, this is this one is using the new the new SDK, and this this includes uh, a, uh, an example that uh, that goes from uh, from from client to server and and back, includes things like uh, authentication. It has uh, it has uh, code in there demonstrating how do you do uh, spiffy. Uh, how do you get the gRPC spiffy links at the control level to authenticate each other with mutual TLS? Uh, and uh, how do you how do you validate things? Uh, I'm, I don't have the policy stuff in there just yet, so I'm just doing a very permissive uh, true true is equal to true policy, and it passes uh, hopefully. And uh, so I've uh, so so at the moment though I that's I'm I'm setting that up as an example where we can show all of the all of the main components in terms of how they in terms of how they work, and uh, make and make it easy for people to to work out how to uh, how to build against the SDK as a as a full working example. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of the more detailed work that's going on, uh, there is uh, continued work for inside of the NSM daemon. To add uh, callbacks, and so uh, callbacks was an interesting thing that we've added into our gRPC tooling, uh, where you, when you connect in with gRPC, one of the problems that tends to arise is, uh, is centered around bidirectional communication. So gRPC is a server client-based model; it does not have a True bidirectional, even though I believe the HTTP framing, the HTTP two itself doesn't support it, but the framing system itself, I believe, does. And um, what we've added onto it is a callback system that uh, does not modify gRPC; is built on top of it, but allows you to create callbacks so that you can get some controlled uh, bidirectional communication between multiple systems. What this will allow us to do is to create a callback that uh, when certain events happen in the network service manager uh, that we'll be able, to, and within the client, that we'll be able to get that bi-directional communication uh, between uh, the two systems and not have to work with multiple, with multiple sockets at that point. Um, another thing that we are focusing on is uh, 
additional work on the VL3 space. So we have uh, registry work that is uh, that we're currently focusing on, uh, specifically uh, with some co-generation around uh, building the uh, the chain. Uh, the VL3 is our is one of our main efforts that we are driving. So basically, uh, we we can do L3 quite uh, quite easily. Like that's that's not a problem. But when you start to put this thing into production, then this is where things like how do we make sure that uh, you get uh, resiliency, that you have the ability to load balance across multiple nodes as uh, uh, across uh, across cluster organizational boundaries so that you can uh, and how do you make sure that you fail over properly that you get your DNS set up properly what if DNS fails how do you how do you re how do you heal it and so our, our VL3 uh, it's a milestone is a is a production quality VL3 uh, so that where you can hook up multiple clusters together and have them interoperate with the with each other workload to workload, uh, and so it's the production version of uh, of that use case. So right now the focus is on is on the the registry to get work done in that space. We also have. Yeah, in, can I ask? In, can I ask? Sure. The, first, you mentioned that you're you're like doing something with ICM to respond there. Is or is it, a, is it a, in the old repo? Oh, so this stuff is uh, the ICMP responder one is is going to be in the new repo. Uh, that's going to be. Is it there now? Can I look at it or? Yeah, you, you can take a look. You can take a look at it. I, I need to push the code up uh, as to no, what I have right I, now. I know. And the same with this VL3 stuff. It's the same thing that these guys showed uh, at the NSM con in uh, San Diego. Is it when you have like a mesh uh, when you can. So you can reach services from other clusters. I mean, you bind the two NSM clusters together. So it's it's the same it's the same use case. What we're what we're doing is we're we're creating a production yeah, version of that. Yeah. Very good. Are you putting it also in the new rep, or where will that show up? Yeah, that this this all we're ramming all of this development to to work in the in the new repo. With uh, with the new architecture, where everything. Where everything is an NSC, more or less, even the data forwarders or something that Ed mentioned last time. Exactly. That, that's exactly what we're doing. I think this is really cool. I want to see this stuff. Uh, no, I, I, I've read it. Now you can continue. I just, uh, I fantastic. Okay. No, no, no worries. And uh, feel free to interrupt me, anyone who, uh, if you have any questions, uh, it's, it's best to do it now while it's still in context. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is this VL3 use case already captured in the use case documentation? Oh, I, I don't know. I'll have to double check okay. that. Um, the, the VL3 use case uh, is, I, I believe that it is, but I know, I know that there certainly is documentation. Um, I'll, I'll ask, um, uh, I'll ask Andre, uh, Andre, are, are, are you on right now? Yep. Yep. Yeah. If if you can if you can uh, have your um, have some of your team look into that and uh, and add that to the agenda for next for next week, uh, and then we can go over the uh, the VL three use case uh, next week in more detail for people to see what we're doing. Yeah, I that, think uh, Denise great. will take care about it. Yeah. Cool. So that gives us an agenda for next week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and so uh, this stuff is still relatively early in its in its in its life cycle, but we're working really hard to uh, to make that all happen. And in terms, uh, it, it, yeah, in in terms of uh, the the new repo, yeah, I'll, we'll we'll continue to make sure that that stuff. I I haven't pushed it up. I have not. Uh, merged it anything into master just yet because what I'm doing is I'm doing an initial first pass where I get things to to work and then I'm going to re break it down into small commits that I can push up in a more controlled way so um, so I don't want to push to I don't want to push a, a large uh, set of changes uh, all at once so that's that's my one hesitation at getting this uh, Getting this out uh, uh, ASAP is I want to make sure that that we give the changes time to to trickle in and get the proper reviews as well. 
just to make sure we, we keep the quality high. So, but once the ICMP responder is, is up and running, I'll push the stuff that I have up now. Uh, it's, it's part of a branch called ICMP server. So I'll push up what I have. Uh, it's very messy code right now, so I'll push up what I have right now. Uh, but uh, I'm going to continue to improve to improve that. You don't have to feel stressed. I'm just very eager to see the new the new stuff. I mean, this is yeah. Uh, ping, ping, ping me in Slack, and I'll link you. Uh, so that way, I, that way, I don't forget. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So an, another thing we have been focusing on is uh, VPP uh, uh, is is on getting. Uh, WireGuard support directly into into VPP. So, for those of you that are not familiar with WireGuard, uh, WireGuard is a point-to-point -point tunneling, crypto, uh, cryptographic tunnel that you can that you can use to connect multiple systems together. Uh, it it has one payload. That payload is IP. Um, and so, in terms of uh, uh, it, it, it now has main it's now been built into the mainline kernel. Uh, so one of the things that we recognized is that in order to hook up in order to hook up uh, 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 VPP to um, to WireGuard, uh, the, we have two paths that we can take. One of them is we could reuse and lift the, the stuff that's within the kernel, uh, which uh, was uh, which was prototyped and uh, and shown off. The second thing that um, that we can do is uh, build that support directly into VPP. So that means we don't have to to uh, waste any kernel interfaces on it. And this actually has some has a nice property because there's a limitation on every system as to how many kernel interfaces you can have, how many ARP requests if you don't do any tuning, how many sorry how how large is your is your ARP table. So there's there's a variety of different knobs that and limitations that you have in addition to getting the performance hit every time you have to recross into the uh, in, into the uh, uh, user space and kernel boundary in order to send those messages off. And so this will this will allow us at the end of the day this will allow us to get uh, a full kernel bypass uh, where you have a client connecting in through Memif or vhost user to VPP, then VPP uh, having direct memory access to your, to your, um, to your NIC card. Uh, it'll allow you to get that full kernel bypass uh, and be able to use WireGuard as your tunneling uh, mechanism and get you those secure, crypt those cryptographically secure tunnels between, uh, between your uh, connections in a, in a seamless way. So that's, um, so that's where we're currently heading with the VPP uh, stuff. And right now they're working on the uh, VPP handshake uh, and uh, we're uh, and, uh, progressing towards getting, uh, getting that out. Um, there is also work being done towards, uh, towards SRIOV. There was an interesting use, uh, use case that uh, was brought up uh, that, and so People are familiar with the first two use cases, which is you load something up with kernel uh, with kernel mode. Uh, you can also load something in direct mode, which is you do the full kernel bypass and write directly to the device. Um, there's a third use case that popped up, uh, and we'll make sure this gets written in to some of the some of the use cases, which is what if you have a device? What if you have uh, a system, uh, let's say a pod or something else? That needs to connect in through a through a specific top of rack port in order to reach a certain network, but that compute is not on the same device or is not on the same node as your as the system that is connected up to the uh, uh, to the uh, S, to that SROV uh, NIC card, and so there's a so there's a an example that was put forward that uh, showed how you can hook up a remote node that it could be a worker node and how we can then use NSM to basically wire in a remote SROV device into uh, into that using kernel mode uh, for for the moment um, and showing off that uh, that connectivity uh, even though the SROV device is on another system. So of course this doesn't 
this doesn't meet requirements in terms of performance for if you have those strong performance requirements. But if your requirement is not a performance requirement, but is a I need connectivity to something that is only available behind a top of rack switch, uh, it, it falls very nicely in, in that environment. Um, the last part is uh, there there is work going into the new SDK for getting more expressive open policy agent uh, policies. So before we were only taking in the token of the last thing that it, that uh, you connected to. We're now passing in the full path information, um, and there's a, there's going to be examples uh, soon as to to show off how how that works. And so you can that'll allow you to to grip cryptographically check the entire path of your system, of of your connection. So uh, if you want to make sure, like uh, uh, that, like for example, in some in some scenarios, you may have you may due to legal requirements need to have a legal agreement with everything you connect to. Uh, in terms of other entities, and so if you have like a firewall as a service, and you have a uh, and you have some third party uh, cloud application service that you connect to, uh, ensuring that uh, when you connect that you have uh, that you have the right set of policies enabled, and that you're controlling those in a in a uh, in a very uh, clean way, um, and controlling what you, what you're connecting to. Uh, across the chain uh, becomes important in those in those scenarios, and so uh, this also this also will help because uh, there's there, there's a set of uh, discussions going on in uh, the Spiffy community. The Spiffy community is working on something called transitive identity. Transitive ident they actually have a full working group on this. So if you're interested in transitive identity. Um, Go hit go hit up the uh, Spiffy com the Spiffy community on how to join that. Uh, what transitive identity basically is is like how do you how do you pass on properties of your identity to another entity so that it can then do operations on on your behalf. And so, uh, for example, as a user, when you connect into a front end application gateway and you wanted to do a payment. Then you're you are actually doing some form of of transitive identity that you're asking that application gateway to connect in and and make a payment on and submit all the details on on your behalf, and so so some of the work that we're doing in here in NSM is relevant to that because the connecting and clients may only have certain capabilities it's allowed to do. And it must go through a certain path, like it must maybe it goes through a firewall, intrusion detection system, to a certain VPN gateway and client, and getting that transitive identity story up and down the entire chain uh, is extremely powerful because that means that both the client and the endpoint can can can, can control cryptographic through cryptographic uh, identity and policy the uh, the type of connections they're willing to make. And uh, this is the uh, this is one of the enabling technologies. This, this open work that's going on for for that use case. Um, so those are the main streams that we that we have going on. If I forgot one, uh, please please bring it up. Uh, it's not out of not out of it being any any less important. It's about uh, just there's a lot of stuff going on and. Uh, Cool. So that was the uh, the main status that we that we have. Um, are there any other topics anyone would like to discuss before we uh, before we finish the meeting up? Cool. And just a couple of reminders. Uh, we have. Um, but let's go ahead and organize. Um, we have two topics that we want to add onto the agenda. The first one is uh, is going to be the uh, uh, the work from Jonathan Berry on uh, moving beyond HTTP. And so, uh, let me, uh, Jonathan, if are are you still on? Yep. So yeah, let me know. Uh, send send. Are, if you're on Slack, uh, you can find me. I'm uh, Frederick Kautz. Um, K A U T Z. Okay. If you are able to find me, or if you can't find me, uh, ping me up on the NSM channel uh, on on the CNCF Slack, and uh, we'll see about uh, organizing some time for you to talk. Sounds great. And 
Um, yeah, and, and so we also have the, the VL3 uh, stuff that's going on. So definitely uh, hit make, I should already be, uh, I should already have a message on that. But uh, yeah, hit me up on, on the Slack as well. Uh, anyone who's interested on the VL3 stuff and I'll, uh, or the ICMP responder stuff, and I'll see about getting you all uh, uh, sneak peeks. On, on what's going on with that. And we'll make sure that we go over the VL3 stuff in, in greater detail in this, uh, in this channel so that we can get uh, uh, more visibility on, on what's going on in that space. Um, with that, um, I, I don't think we have anything else that's, uh, that's urgent to discuss. And so uh, thank you all for attending and you all have a great day. We'll see you all next week at the same time. Yep. See you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Take care.